There is a final star that shines brightly in every episode of Johnny Quest. The music of White Curtain blazes through all 26 episodes of The Adventures of Johnny Quest and is probably the most consistent high mark throughout this wild experiment. All right, hold your fire. I guess it's up to race now. I hope he can come up with something. Hang on tight. I'm going to try something the hard way. Doug always said that the music for Johnny Quest was absolutely the best it could be, that perfectly captured the intent and style of the show. Here we go again! You're going right into him! That's the general idea! Huh? Fasten your seatbelt! And Joe Barbera has often called composer Curtin a true musical genius. Almost every piece of underscore you have been hearing in this presentation has been from the nearly two hours of dazzling cues Hoyt Curtin wrote for Quest. Hoyt was born in Dewey, California, and at the age of five, when the family moved to Bernardino, took an interest in the piano. He played with several jazz bands and formed his own orchestra in high school. After serving in the Navy during World War II, Hoyt earned his master's degree in music at USC and began working in television commercials. After working with Hoyt on a Schlitz beer commercial where the composer came up with a jingle in a record five minutes time, Hannah and Barbara looked to him when they needed music for their first solo venture, Rough and Ready. They sometimes have their little spats, even fight like dogs and cats, but when they need each other, that's when they're rough and ready. When they asked him to turn to action and drama for Johnny Quest, Hoyt claims he simply winged an adventure theme. Ending art card, take one. Saying he simply winged it was typical of Hoyt Curtin's soft-spoken humility that masked his enormous talent. This was my impression of him when I had my own personal contact with him via his website shortly before his passing in 2000. Insert one, take one at bar 54. Hoyt said the Quest music was performed by a regular jazz band consisting of four trumpets, six trombones, five woodwinds, and a five-man rhythm section, all of them top musicians at that time in Los Angeles. Recorded at RCA in Hollywood, Hoyt says he had to stay in the booth most of the time he was laughing so hard. As a challenge to the trombone players, and because of some ribbing they had given him about writing music that was too easy to play, in the main title of Johnny Quest, Hoyt wrote for the trombone in a way which forced the slide of the instrument to have to change positions too quickly from one extreme to the other, and it made it impossible to really play correctly. Maybe not to our ears, but the composers I have played the theme for says it is right here where the trombones can't hit all the notes as written correctly. <laughs> Hoyt said that that was the best they could get it, and that he had a wonderful time watching his buddies, some of the best musicians in the biz, sweating and swearing as they tried to master this impossible trombone riff, and that take after take, as they got more and more red-faced and winded trying to hit all those notes, the situation got funnier and funnier. As is often the case with productions at Hanna-Barbera, the title bestowed on Curtin for his musical contributions never allowed him to take credit for actually composing and conducting his music. Never suggesting that the man ever composed a note of all that wonderful music. There is strong evidence that Hanna-Barbera seemed focused on keeping the spotlight on Bill and Joe, saving the lion's share of the credit for themselves, regardless of the enormous contributions of those they supervised. I just don't trust anyone who smiles all the time. There's something fishy about this. The big, brassy sound of the 60s had to be one of Hoyt Curtin's fortes, because the music for Yogi Bear... Yogi Bear is smarter than the average bear. Yogi Bear is always in the ranger's head. The Flintstones...
everything that came after included some of the most kick-ass, sparkling jazz riffs I have ever heard. A personal favorite is some of the trumpet parts in the end title of the Jetsons. He might have just winged it, but that wonderful jazzy jackhammer brass that got your blood boiling and your heart pumping still sounds to me like no composer before or since. <laughs> 